All right, so finally, as I said earlier, after 72 hours of this war, more than 1,000 civilians have been killed, 14 of which are Americans, and another unconfirmed number of Americans either missing or being held hostage by a terrorist group, Joe Biden finally decided to come out of his hideout and address the nation. It was it's typical weird Biden, but honestly, though, I'll give him some credit. It was better than I expected. So in this moment, we must be crystal clear. We stand with Israel. We stand with Israel. Like every nation in the world, Israel has the right to respond, indeed has a duty to respond to these vicious attacks. We also discussed how democracies like Israel and the United States are stronger and more secure when we act according to the rule of law. You can see Kamala Harris look thrilled to be there. I mean, this is still not a sentient leader of the free world. Like, no part of that just breeds strength to me. This is not a man that I want to follow into battle. His lack of leadership have, has caused this global instability. You know what a, a real president that's proud of greatness, you know how he sounds? And Iran knows that, and they've been put on notice. If you f*** around with us, if you do something bad to us, we are going to do things to you that have never been done before. This is what a president of the greatest country in the world sounds like. And facing a crisis like this, this is how I would expect a president to address the world, unlike Biden did. If I was president, I would say, hey, look, our ally has been attacked by a terrorist group. I will address that shortly, but they have also killed 14 Americans and 20 or more that we fear may have been taken hostage. To the Palestinian Authority and the Hamas militants involved, you have one hour to release our citizens into the hands of Israeli forces. Our first carrier battle group is inbound, as well as thousands of U.S. special operation forces. Our mission is to retrieve American hostages. Anyone opposing this will be killed. Your buildings will be destroyed. Resistance is signing your own death warrant. Israeli uses its missiles to protect its children. Hamas uses its children to protect its missiles. Remove your militant headquarters from civilian hospitals, schools, religious establishments. This is your only warning. To Israel, if I was addressing them, you have our total support in any and all of the actions and retaliations against those who carried out this unprovoked attack. Please provide my Defense Department in a classified briefing with a list of your top 10 targets in which we can perform kinetic strikes to your aid. And to the United Nations, which America contributes over $12 billion a year to, get in there. American taxpayers expect you to apply aid valued at greater than our last 10 years of contributions. If you're not on the ground in 24 hours, we're cutting all your funding permanently. In New York headquarters, we're going to sell that one to the highest bidder. This is what a president who actually believes in America sounds like. We don't have that right now. And some of these people, they're worried about sparking a war. We're already at war. Russia is threatening nuclear warfare. Afghanistan is being run by the same terrorists who spent 20 years trying to kick out of there. Iraq has fallen back to the same nuts. The FBI just told people in New York City to, quote, remain vigilant under an elevated threat assessment. And Iran, the biggest state sponsor of terror, who we just gave $6 billion back to, just supported an attack against our closest ally in the region. You, you, you think this is, you know, a mistake to go in there and get Americans? What if it was your son, your daughter, your mother or father being held by fanatics that intend to chop their head off on national TV? It's a mistake not to go get them. The reputation of America is at stake. And if our people and the world know we are not coming to get them, all bets are off. You think anyone wants to be on the other side of America's military might? Look, our adversaries are emboldened by weakness. But let me tell you, given the fact that I actually do have firsthand knowledge of this, even the most committed Islamic terrorist will change his tune when looking down the flight path of a fighter jet dropping a 2,000-pound GBU-82 bomb at 1,000 miles an hour. Trust me. Time to flex those muscles. And we got to do it on someone else's shores. Otherwise, I fear we're going to have to do it on our own. Now, what these liberals don't understand is that these people will kill any of us, any American, any Israeli, without a second thought. Look, they, they are the same savages that I looked in the eye in Iraq. Their religion and their beliefs have been at the center of every regional conflict. Every one of their, even amongst their own factions of their own religion, this has been going on for thousands of years. You think some gay pride parade in New York supporting Palestine is going to spare you from that ideology? You got another thing coming. I, I pray you don't have to witness that. Our military 
Also, better wake up. Not the military itself, just the leadership, because they're out to lunch. Diversity is not our greatest strength. You know what is? A quarter-mile-long aircraft carrier with over 100 planes and helicopters and a litany of other ships at her side and enough firepower to level a city. That steaming towards our enemy at 50 miles per hour through the Mediterranean, that's our strength. The fact that people like, to tr like me train for years to kick in their door in the middle of the night and kill our nation's enemies, that's our strength. Not some DEI office. Also, climate change, Lloyd Austin, not our biggest threat. Bad guys are. And the Secretary of Defense better get his head out of his rear and learn that. All these academics, especially those at Harvard, conde oh, they're condemning Israel. But you know what? I got an idea. Spend a quarter of your annual tu tuition, get on a plane, go over to Palestine, and get a real education, or shut your mouth about what you think you might know. You think this could never happen here? How many people have come through our southern border that hate us? Oh, that's right. You can't tell me that number because you don't know. So before you or any other liberals or Democrats or whatever whine about my big scary rifle and magazines that hold 30 rounds, who are you going to run and hide behind? God forbid something does happen. It ain't going to be some purple-haired barista or a feminist, I'll tell you that. It'll be the people like me that these academics and these highbrow ivory tower liberals are condemning today. Ronald Reagan knew. Donald Trump knew. American strength stops wars. Appeasement encourages them.